Hello everyone. Today's video is more targeted at the SMO round 2. And it confronts the problem that many of us have, which is, when can I say that something is obvious? Now of course, once in a while we all know that we try to say something is obvious, simply because we don't know how to explain it. And that's what you see on the thumbnail. Uh, it is clear when we have no idea why it is true at all. Now that's not what I'm referring to here. I am referring more to legitimate attempts where some of you feel that your solutions are very, very long and you're not sure how much do you need to write. In other words, am I writing too little? Am I writing too much? And one of the problems is that you don't receive back your second round scores. So um, the SMO round two uh, results, I guess, are a bit of a mystery. You can guess based on your placing, but you're not entirely sure. So here are a few tips to help you know what to write and what not to write. Now, the first thing is to remember that it's a proof and not workings. Now, this is trying to tell you that you should worry about whether it can be understood, not that the person grading it is looking for every opportunity to deduct your marks. So here's an example. Let's say that you have this functional equation. Now, uh, suppose that I did a substitution of letting y equals to 1. And if I did that substitution, I get fx equals to fx f1 minus f of x plus 1 plus 1. Now, uh, f of 1 is equal to 2. So you don't need to now put in 2 uh, and then show three steps of working. You can immediately just say that this implies that f of x plus 1 is equal to fx plus 1. Now, it is understood what you have done between the first step and the second step. Now, even more than that, you can say that this implies that if fx plus 1 is fx plus 1, every time the input increases by 1, the output increases by 1. So all you need to do is to start from f of 1 equals to 2, and we can then say that f of x will be equal to x plus 1 for all integers x by induction. Now, the by induction is enough. You don't need to show the induction because the induction is going to be remarkably obvious, right? The base case is f of 1 equals to 2. Why is f of 2 equals to 3? Because it is 1 plus 1 equals to 2 and 2 plus 1 equals to 3 and then... So this is very obvious. Now, you must remember that the person grading the problem is often the question setter or at least someone whose math ability is that of a math professor or an IMO medalist. So they know what you mean when you say by induction. Of course, make sure that you know why it's true by induction, but you don't need to write up a very boring induction. Everyone who has done an induction proof before knows how you would show this by induction. Right, so to be even more extreme, it means that if let's say that you have even a very complicated uh, multiplication, like let's say uh, 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3 is in a working, you do not need to explain how you multiply them together. Just give the value. It's okay. You don't need to show every single step if it is quote unquote obvious how one would go about doing it. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing is not to go too far in the opposite direction and say that the whole problem is obvious. Now, you don't want to say that the whole problem is obvious because remember that the grading criteria is usually could someone who doesn't know the solution, write this down. 
In other words, how will the marker know that you have solved the problem? There must be some evidence that you understand how it works. Now, this is an SMO Junior Round 2 problem. So it's the SMO Junior Round 2. Now, this is actually just an application of Cauchy Schwartz. But that's not really what they want you to do. Right? Because if let's say that you look at this substituting in x and y, this is actually just two variable Cauchy Schwartz. But once it's in the SMO Junior, you get the sense that the question is not testing you whether you know Cauchy Schwartz. It is testing whether you can prove this thing, and it doesn't matter whether you know it's called two variable Cauchy Schwartz or not. So even if you do know that it is Cauchy Schwartz, you should still try to give a proof. Now, how one would go about giving that proof is up to you. Um, usually, the standard proof is either by um, for higher levels by vectors, but for the SMO Junior, it would just be by uh, squaring and using AMGM. Or complete the square. So, don't say the whole question is obvious. If let's say that it looks like a theorem, that means that the question is asking you to show the theorem. So you cannot go in and say everything is obvious because I could also go in and just after 5 seconds say it is obvious and how will the grader know whether you're just um, bluffing or you actually know why it is obvious. Now the third suggestion is that name as much as possible. Now, what do I mean by name. Now what I mean by name is that don't say that stuff are well known. So not so good would be just to say well known. Now better would be if you can say why it is true. Some basic explanation. Like for example, this is well known to be equal since this is greater than this which is greater than this. So summarize the solution. Now the best of course would be if you can just say whose theorem is or what's the name of the result. Now, of course, this requires a little bit of mathematical knowledge and understanding, but it is still something that is ideal. So take, for example, this problem over here. This is from the SMO Open second round. So you are at liberty to quote a little bit more than the SMO Junior second round. So we have got an acute angled triangle ABC. This is a circumcircle omega. The auto center H is somewhere about here. And then D and E are the feet of appendiculars from A onto BC and B onto AC. Uh, P is a point on the minor arc BC of the circle. And then MN are the feet of the perpendiculars from P onto BC and AC respectively, which tells me that I should probably not put P down there. It is maybe more advisable to put P uh, somewhere that is uh, a bit more neutral looking. So uh, I'm very indecisive, but I'm going to do something like this.
And I'm going to stop here because I'm not about to solve an SMO open uh, round two problem in just um, two or three minutes. But if you recognize uh, something about feet of the perpendiculars from another point on the circumcircle, uh, you would know that one of the things that we can do is to actually draw another perpendicular which I guess should be actually outside so my circle is very bad uh, let me just draw the perpendicular to the outside let's say this is Q and these three points should be collinear Now, moreover, um, it is also true that if you join pH, this line bisects pH. Now, if you say that this is well known, it's a little bit iffy. It's a little bit iffy because uh, if you tried solving this problem, you would realize that the solution is only about two lines away from M and Q being collinear and the line bisecting pH. How you could evidence that you know this is if you know the name. Now, M, N and Q are collinear. This is a Simpson line. So this is the Simpson line. And we say that the Simpson line is going to bisect pH. Now as long as you can name it, it shows that you are aware of what it is. So this is a bit physics-like in a sense, right? If you quote Newton's law, it's fine. If you just wrote down a random equation, uh, it may look as if you are bluffing. Now all of these things that I've said in these three examples may seem a little bit like uh, confusing because you might say, so do I write or do I don't write? Can I say it's obvious or can I not say it's obvious? And so the last and most important thing is to remember that there is a middle ground. There is something in between obvious and not obvious. Right? I alluded to it here when you said well known with a little bit of an explanation. Now, what I'm saying is that very often it is okay to just do something in between saying it's obvious and just writing all of the steps out. So for instance, uh, if let's say that you were concerned about writing that this is well known. Now, you can give some sort of explanation as to how did you know? Like, why is this true? Of course, if you have no idea why it is true and you just happen to have read it in a book, then just write it down and hope for the best. But if you know a little bit, then give a little bit. In other words, it is better to say a bit than to say nothing. For instance, we might say that it is well known that the product of sums of two squares can be written as also a sum of two squares. So for example, if uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared equals to 5 and uh, 3 squared plus 7 squared is equal to 58, then if I multiply 5 by 58, which is 290, I would expect that this can be written as a sum of two squares. And indeed, this can be written as a sum of two squares. It is uh, equal to 11 squared plus 13 squared or 1 squared plus 17 squared. But if let's say that you know the reason, just give the reason. There is no harm in showing that you understand. 
So there is nothing wrong if let's say that you knew that this is equal to AC plus BD squared plus AD minus BC squared. If you knew this, write it down. If you don't know this, but you just know the result, then just write it down and hope for the best. In other words, give as much as you can. Give as much as is helpful and answer the question. So I think in real life, we all know what answering the question means. If someone asks, how are you after you have just fallen down and fractured your arm, obviously they are asking, how's your arm recovering? But if let's say that you just have uh, someone that asks you, how are you? You don't need to tell them about your arm if let's say it's a normal day. It's just, how are you? I'm okay. So the same question comes with a context. And with more experience, most of us will know what is the question and what is the thing that is well known or obvious. So this is just a very brief um, discussion of this. Feel free to ask anything else that you might want to find out more about in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks everyone and see you again very soon.